Hello, beautiful people. Thank you for taking your time to view Lydia's insights. And now for the introduction. Ah, uh, uh, okay, yeah, <laughs> no, okay. All right, I'm gonna stop that. Sprinkle, 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 a sparkle, 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 a bunch of pizzazz and all that jazz, woo! All right, so thank you for, as I said, taking your time to view this. Um, Oh, yes, and by the way, happy Valentine's Day to y'all. Happy Valentine's to you. <laughs> okay, so that was an extra, extra, extra something. I am I just got done with weightlifting class, literally, um, like five, ten minutes ago, and I just, I decided to do this right now um, just because I just want to kind of just want to get it done with and um because i i have a lot of things i have to do today besides schoolwork getting things turned in today um like my for my science class oh my gosh it's like right now it's like am i am i trying to become a weather person and i'm i know that there's more to it um but right now that's what we're learning about the weather how it's this and how it's that and uh, I can't even think of the terms, but anyway, um, int I forget the name of it. Intro into environment behavioral. It's basically about how the human impacts environment and well, later I'll get more into it. But um, anyway, so <sighs> last week, um, you can tell that I'm really slow right now. I says, I, I am, I, I ate not so good well i haven't had a donut in like forever and then I, I had it last night um my daughter brought some home um in the evening and so i really think that impacted me <laughs> i really do <laughs> besides being tired i wasn't even performing that great um but anyway so um the last thing that i left you guys with was that I had looked down and whoa, I'm pregnant. No way. How did that happen? <laughs> and so then I had agreed to go to um, the hospital to get checked out. And then when they put me, they did a CAT scan first and they seen something with the CAT scan. Um, that's what I had. I didn't have an MRI at that the first time I had a CAT scan. And then um, I don't even know the duration of time that it took, but then uh, the neurologist came in to see me. Um, little did I know he was an actual surgeon as well. And he came and he told me, um, you have a brain tumor and we want to do surgery to remove it. Like right now, the reason why they didn't take me in at that moment was because of me being pregnant. And they wanted to make sure that if the baby was to be born, that her lungs could handle um, being born. I mean, that's how little she was. I don't even think I was six months, honestly. But since it was my fourth pregnancy, I probably looked further along because the more pregnancies you have, you typically gain more weight with them. And you just, you just look bigger than you really are. I don't know if that makes any sense. But... Um, so I, I may have been like five going on the six months, but I'm not really positive. So they wanted to put steroids and they put it in your thigh muscle. And I, if I remember correctly, it hurt, it hurt. Um, so, but two days later I went in, they rolled me in to get surgery, to get their brain tumor removed. And, um, the size of it was described as an ice cream scoop. And I don't know about the average person. I'm believing an average person, when you do an ice cream scoop, that's, you I mean, you don't go skimpy, right? Right? <laughs> so, so a brain, um, ice cream scoop of my left frontal lobe is gone. Okay. And what I have learned that that affects is decision making. The process of decision-making 
of the consequence. Um, so remember, this had been growing since my first child. And um, so, uh, and then also it affects speech. And I do, I have a hard time sometimes with pronouncing certain words. I have to go slower. Um, words that like I should be able to say, but I still have trouble with that. And yes, your brain does heal. It does recuperate. However, there are certain things that, that it will always be this way for me. This is why for school, I do have it to where um, I have a longer length of time for my test taking. Um, I have it where if I'm on campus and on ground and they give the test on ground, then I have a place where I can go separate from everybody else uh, because I get distracted super easily. That I know people have that even without a brain tumor removal. Um, but and also the length of time. Um, so as of right now, that's pretty much all I have for extra. Um, but I things do take longer for me to understand, to comprehend. Um, and so, you, you know, you just, you learn to, to cope with it. You learn to deal with it and you move on. And, um, and yeah, I am doing so much, so much better. And your brain literally um, you can rewire and wire your synapses. I don't even think I pronounced that right, the word right. Yeah, um, all of these things, and the more thinking you do, the more intelligent you can become. You have to, so on that, you know, that is, I haven't even studied that, but different books I've read um, by Dr. Carolyn Leaf is one example, and she speaks about how you are as intelligent as you want to be. Um, so back to what I was saying. So I had two days later, they have all these doctors there because I want to make sure the baby's okay as well. So I, as the surgeon is removing my tumor, I have the baby doctor there just in case I go into labor. There's a baby, a doctor there that's going to deliver the baby. Um, by the way, it was a girl and I named her Miracle, um, because really there was no other name for her. And um, so that she wasn't born, um, that was a miracle in its own. And, and then also they thought that things could be wrong with her when she was born. So, and, um, but she, she was, she is, and she was born perfect, nothing wrong. She's as smart as can be. Well, as smart as she wants to be, you know, she's 17, so. Um, um, so, anyways, that's a whole nother story, my daughter. Uh, but, so two days later, I got the surgery. And then I have to go through healing. Um, they wanted to do chemotherapy and radiation. I and my ex-husband were like, well... We don't want to go down that route, and I'm sure it was me more me than him because I was just like, no, because I wanted to nurse all my children, and for me to do chemotherapy and radiation, I know you're probably listening to this and saying like, oh my goodness, but look, I'm still here, and I'm still living, and you know the chemotherapy and radiation, it kills the good stuff that you need also, along with the bad stuff, and also I now know that chemotherapy cannot pass the brain barrier that you have so what were they gonna like i don't get that honestly now that i know it's like what the heck were they thinking but anyways um so yeah i didn't i i didn't i said no to that and um and here i am 2022 and that was 2004 that um the first brain tumor yes i say first because a second one did come so i had a son after i had my daughter miracle i had another son um i don't believe there was any symptoms that came after i had him 
um, the one thing that I do know is that with my daughter Miracle, my body, this was before the brain tumor um, was removed. No, it was after it was removed, of course. Um, when she was to be born, my body just wouldn't go on labor. So I had a C-section. And that's what the surgeon had wanted originally. Um, he actually sent an email to my OBGYN and he said, you're, you're going to be the death of her, uh, letting her go natural. You know, she's going to push and then bust a blood vessel. And there's a lot of truth to that. Um, and God knew, God knew. And so thank you, Lord, for saving my life <laughs> for, you know, on that one. Oh my goodness. But uh, she was actually going to... Anyway, that's a whole other story right there. Oh, my gosh. So, um, I had my son, C-section. Um, not too much longer. Um, close to two years, but not quite. I had my daughter. Um, and that was 2008. By the time it came to 2008, uh, they did, I, got, I was pregnant with her. They sent me in for an annual checkup. Uh, beginning, it must have been so small that they didn't see it. So they said, oh, everything's clear. I guess they took a second look. They said, oh, actually, we're sorry. We missed it. You actually do have a regrowth of your tumor. So this time around, they um, had it to where my daughter was to be born first. And then I was to go into surgery after my body went through a little bit of recovery after delivery after c-section um, and then I went in for the second brain tumor removal and I can tell you honestly I went through more fear with the second one and I think it was just because it took longer I had more time to think oh my gosh oh my gosh I could die um, so because the first one was like two days and then get it out so all right um, focus so, 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 more time to think, more scary, more fear, um, and, uh, and that was a tough one coming back from, um, I had agreed to letting them to put a chemotherapy wafer. Now the wafer went into the cavity. The cavity is the hole of the removal of the tumor. They just put it right there in that hole and, um. It took a long time to recover. Um, I was down for probably like a good year. I mean, of course, when I say down, it's not like I was permanently down. I could still get up, occasionally go to church, but going to church would just wear me out. If I would go to church, I'd be like worn out for like at least two to three days and I couldn't do anything. Um, and that was not for, I don't even know how long I was able to go to church, but and I was having seizures at church and this, it took me forever, it feels like forever to recuperate from, um, from that, yeah, from the, the second surgery and the, the chemotherapy waiver. I don't know much about that because I haven't looked into that. I haven't looked at my previous records on this. I need to still um, call down to Southern California to get my records um, from UC, um, UCI. So, um, and then, um, the pattern was broken with my last child. It was a girl and I was glad because I already had all these girl clothes. And like, if I had a boy, I would have had to go out and buy and we were as broke as could be. So it was a huge blessing because I had such cute, pretty girl clothes. And so I had a girl next after I had... You know, I had the daughter, which then I had the brain surgery, and it took me forever to recover. And then I had my last child, and by this time that I was having my last child, I was like, I'm done. I don't want any more children. And so um, I then took this, this example in the Bible to my ex-husband. I said, look, this is what happened. I said, Timothy. Timothy in the Bible got circumcised, not because of, you know, not trusting the Lord or this or that, but because he wanted to do it so that way he could speak and talk to the, um, to the other people. I'm not exactly sure. 
You know, I think it's an axe. No, it must, maybe it's an Timothy. <laughs> Guys, please be forgiving with me right now. Anyways, I took it to my ex-husband. I said, see, so, you know, I should just get myself, you know, fixed, you know, get my tubes tied. And, um, so he's like, yeah, that's okay, that's okay, just go ahead. I'm telling you guys, oh my gosh, I just like, oh my goodness. Um, I have changed so much, and, and there's lots of ways that I haven't changed. And, um, I'm just, it's just, I look back at that, it's like another, it's like another lifetime ago. It really is. I truly feel that way and I'm still growing and my brain is um, you know it's still I'm, I'm gonna say it's fully healed but I'm still growing and it's still my brain is still like growing in ways at leaps and bounds so um, knowledge knowledge is key it's essential um, so where was I? <laughs> Where was I? Seriously. Okay, I think I'm going to end this. Um, thankful that I, my last child was a girl and no more babies and thankful. And then the rest of the story on everything else that will be sometime, sometime much in the future. And so, oh my gosh, 16 minutes this is. So, oh, okay, thank you. Bye, people.